all happy Sabbath, church. Sabbath. I'm going to be singing El Shaddai. So. Amen. No music, just me. <laughs> El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Yana Adonai, age to age, you're still the same. Ministries Sabbath, so I would like all the women to come forward and surround me, please. Come around me. <laughs> come, come. I have a special prayer. I worked on this prayer to the wee hours of the morning. And I, 
I did a lot of praying, and I did a lot of crying. So we women, this church, I was so involved in this church, and now I can hardly do anything. But I still praise the Lord for every day. Amen. And uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of love among us women here. And uh, other women have felt it. And I hope that you feel it in my prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you on this Women's Ministry Sabbath. We thank you for your love. You know our anguish, our pain, and our tears. When we are stressed, you give us comfort. You know of our difficulties and our challenges. You give us compassion. We thank you for the men in our lives. They're our fathers, our brothers, our sons, and our husbands. They hold our hands and stand beside us, stand beside us. We thank you for the women of scripture, for they showed us courage, strength, and faith. There was Ruth, Queen Esther, Abigail, the woman at the well, and the woman with the issue of blood. So we gather here before you and ask for direction and knowledge, guidance and strength and for your forgiveness. Some of us have lost our spiritual equilibrium. We have become lazy in thy word. We women gather. We as a church family, we lift each other up, for we are sisters and cousins and aunts and good friends. We carry the load of keeping our families well fed, united, and content. We teach the principles of our faith. There are women who are being ridiculed, exploited, <clears throat> abused, and neglected. Help us to help them to know of your love and your understanding. They need to know that you're the source of their, their endurance, that we can be brave and face the storm and not be afraid. Search us, O oh God. Ye, ye know our hearts. Cleanse us from every sin and set us free. Guide us and bless us that you are the center of our lives, we are, that we are openly asked for these things in the name of your Son, the living Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. to open their Bibles with me as I read the scripture reading, which is found in Luke 1, 28 and 29. <coughs> 28, the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. 29, Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greetings this might be. May we be blessed by the reading of the word this morning. Amen. Good morning. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes, you can hear me? Okay.
Would you mind if I said one more word of prayer? Yes. Father in heaven, as we hear your message for your people today, we ask that your Holy Spirit be with us. Fill me, Lord, with your spirit. Fill me, Lord, with your grace. Fill me with your love so that what I share will be your start. I pray that I might glorify you and bring honor to your name today. And we ask for a special blessing on your people. Bless your people today. We expect it, Father. We thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Janelle, Ethel, Amina, and to Liz, Rianne, and for those who participated this morning in our Sabbath school and our worship. I just want to share with the congregation uh, some of the blessings that we have as a church that we don't see. I want to welcome back Joni. With her are her two beautiful children, Joseph and Shalene. Is that correct? We just want to welcome you back and we praise God for answered prayers. You and your family, including Mike, are a blessing to us. This church is a blessing to us. Amen. Amen. And I want to I want to take this time to recognize some women in our church that have been a blessing to me as well as to my family. Let's see. Auntie Frances. Auntie Frances, raise your hand in case no one knows Auntie Frances. How many of you know Auntie Frances? Oh, amen. Everybody. <laughs> Everybody. Diamond's grandmother, yes. She has been a blessing to me. She has taught me a lot. And we younger women should learn from those who are much more experienced. I don't want to say older, but they're more mature. Amen? Amen. Because the Bible teaches us, teaches us that the older, more mature women in our church are supposed to teach the younger women how to love our husbands, how to raise our children, how to love and respect God in His house of worship. Amen? Amen. Another one is Auntie Liz, my co-op. She said something to me that really stirred my heart last week. I believe it was last week or the week before. And uh, you said something to the effect where she was sharing with me her experience when she was, she went back home after her hospitalization that she had to ask the church members to come and help her with cleaning, with cooking, with checking the mail and bringing the mail to her. And that was a rebuke to me because I don't do those things for our church. And God is putting that in my heart. She had to ask DC, I believe, and Francis. then Auntie Francis to come and help her. And we, how blind we were to see that we needed to reach out to Auntie Liz. So forgive me, Auntie Liz. Forgive us. But I pray that God would open up her eyes and anoint our eyes with eye salve so that we can see the needs of our church members. Because if we don't do that, how can we even minister to the people outside? Right? God gives us our church family so we can practice. Amen? Amen. 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 Isn't God good? Amen. Okay. Does anyone have a Kleenex? <laughs> Thank you, Auntie Francis. Today, today's sermon is called Blessed to be a Blessing. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to share with you a little bit about um, how God has been blessing me in learning more about our church, our history, how we came about as a church, what is our work, what is our role for this time, why God raised us up as a church during these last days, and how we are empowered, God has empowered us to do His work. Let's look at the story of Mary in the New Testament. Who is Mary? She is the mother of Jesus. Let's turn to Luke chapter 1, verse 28. Luke chapter 1, verse 28. Let's look at her life at the time when the angel Gabriel came to her to announce the good news. Luke chapter 1, verse 28. Everyone there, say amen. amen. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, or greetings, or hello, in our turn today. Hail thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. When I read this, I thought, you know, God has also spoken these very words to another woman. And it is the church. You know how in Bible prophecy, a woman is represented, or the church is represented as women? Yes. So these same words that the angel Gabriel spoke to Mary are the very same words that he is speaking us today as a Seventh-day Adventist people. Brothers and sisters of the Waipahu Seventh-day Adventist Church, greetings. Thou that art favored, highly favored, above all people of the world. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with every one of us. Blessed are you among all the churches, among all the peoples of the world. Did you know that God holds his church with high esteem? Amen. Amen. The Bible describes us as the apple of his eye. And anything that touches the apple of his eye, anything that touches us, God is concerned. And God cares for anything that touches us. Amen? Amen. Okay. Going on to Luke chapter 1, verse 29. And when she... Mary saw him, the angel, she was troubled at his saying. She wasn't quite sure what to make of it when the angel Gabriel told her, <clears throat> Blessed thou that art highly favored. And she cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. She was thinking, what is God up to? What is God going to tell me? What is this angel going to tell me? Did I do anything wrong? You know? But she was wondering, why did the angel come to her? And what was the meaning of that greeting that God gave to her? Let me go back. Thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. You know, as a church today, there's so many things that are going on. There's so much of Satan's deceptions and Satan's sophistries that have come into the church. And we have forgotten who we are. We have forgotten our identity. We have forgotten where we came from, who we are, and where we're going. And that is the burden of my heart today, 
is to share with you where God has brought us, why God has put us into existence, why God has raised us up into, as a church, where God is taking us, where God is leading us, and what should be our response. In Luke chapter 1, verse 30 to 37 that follows, God acknowledges Mary's distrust and doubt. You know, she wasn't quite sure if she was going to be doing something special for God when Gabriel told her. She wasn't quite sure why God chose her. A lot of times we don't know why God chooses us. But God doesn't choose us because of our greatness. God doesn't choose us because of our name. God doesn't choose us because of our money or our talents or our gifts. But God chooses us because we are the smallest. We are the weakest. And God will use the weakest to confound the wise. For he says, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. God acknowledges Mary's distress and doubt by giving her evidence of what he is about to do for her. God demonstrates this by what he has already done on behalf of her cousin, Elizabeth. Let's turn to there, chapter 1 of Luke. This one is paint. Luke chapter 1, verses 30 to 37. Anyone, this one is a little small. Oh. <laughs> Doesn't even have like a. But this one. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, does anyone have a big Bible? Yeah. Or like a big print? Yeah. You have it? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Leah. That's her. Luke chapter <laughs> 1, verse, verses 30 to 37. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Ethel told a story about fear. Amen? A lot of times, God's people, instead of going forward and trusting in his promises, and trusting in who God is and believing that what He says He will do and that who He is, He is. Amen. A lot of times we're afraid to go forward and give all for Jesus. Amen? Amen? I, I have fears too. I have doubts. I have fears. I'm afraid to do the Lord's work. But here, God tells his people and his church, and he tells me, he tells you, do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. Amen? Verse 31, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. going to open this up. Did you know that we also as a church conceive Christ? How so, you ask, in our characters? 
as Mary bore Jesus in her womb, so we too as a church can bear or reflect the character, the very character, the very image of Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. In Colossians 1, 27, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Let's turn to that. Colossians 1, verse 27. It says here, To them God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Did you know that of all the people in the world, we are privileged to reflect God's glory to the whole world. And nobody else can do that. Did you know that? Only the Seventh-day Adventists God's true remnant church. Those who accept his truth. Every little ray of truth. Every light of truth that God shows you. That God shows me. We are to accept. And we become like that sun. That rises from in the morning that becomes brighter and brighter unto that perfect day. Amen. As we obey every light of truth that we know, that we hear, that we read from God's word, we become brighter and brighter lights for God in this world. And guess what? Our characters are also are being changed and transformed. Amen. Amen. From image to image. Okay? Let me go on. Luke chapter 1. Let's go back to Luke chapter 1. Verse 32. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. As a people, are we not great? We might not be the most fanciest as far as the clothes that we wear, the cars that we drive, the homes that we have, the jobs that we have. But God has exalted his church be great in this world. We have so many great privileges as a church. Amen? Amen. That first angel, Gabriel, he was a messenger. Are there messengers today? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What has God given us? What message has God given us today? Does anyone know? As Seventh-day Adventists, what distinct <coughs> message, what special message do we have and are responsible for sharing with the entire world? Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. But what specifically? We have a special message. What is it? A health message, a sanctuary message. The three uh, angels message. message. The three angels message. Sabbath message. And who is that message given to? To those who want to receive it. Mm. And who received that message? We, Ellen G. White did. And the loud cry. Ellen G. White. Mm -hmm. Ellen G. White. And the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Back then they weren't called Seventh-day Adventists. But there was a people that God was calling to receive the message. This last 
warning message to give to the people, to the world. Just like Gabriel gave the message to Mary that she was going to bear a son, so God gives to his church today a message to bear, that we will bear Christ's likeness in us. Amen? Let's continue. Verse 33. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? So she's saying, Well, how can I how can I bear a son? You know, I'm not even yet married to Joseph. And I, I've never, you know, been with a man or had any relationships with men, so how could this be? A lot of times we too, we doubt. Really, God, you you are giving me the responsibility and the privilege to give the last message of warning to the world? Really? Verse 35. And answered the angel. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will, will be called the Son of God. Is there a time when the Holy Spirit will come in full force, in full strength among His people, among us? When is that time? You guys remember? What is that called when the Holy Spirit is poured in full force, in full measure among His people? Revival. What was that? Revival. Revival and Reformation or the? The latter rain. The latter rain, right? Rain represents what in the Bible? The Holy Spirit. Was there an outpouring of the, the early rain already upon God's church? Yes. Does God want to pour out His Spirit again? Yes. For the latter rain? Why? His coming is soon. Uh, right, that's right. His coming is soon, and God wants to harvest His fruits. God wants to harvest His people. He wants to bring His people home. Amen? So we play such a crucial role in that outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, we do. Amen? Yeah, yeah. Amen. That's why God had ra has raised us up. Because God wants to pour out His Spirit upon us. But are we ready for it? Are we doing the things that we should be doing? Are we faithful in Bible study? Prayer? Witnessing? Ministering to those in our church. Visiting. Those who need to be visited. Calling up those in our church who need to be called. Hey, I miss you. I said, where were you? you know. um, I'm going to diverge a little bit. I'm going to share with you where I feel um, we are lacking. Do you remember the message of Revelation 3? The Church of Laodicea. Let's turn to that. Revelation chapter 3. And that is found in verses 14 through 19. Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 through 19. A lot of times we can think that we are doing okay as a people. But then God brings to light our true character, our true identity, our true, how should I say, defects and weaknesses that we don't see. Mm -hmm. Revelation 4, I said verse 16, yes, through 19. Or hold on for a second. Revelation 3. I apologize. Verse 
verse 14, starting with verse 14. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, who are the Laodiceans? The church. It's us. It's the Seventh-day Adventist church. This message is for us. Because God is wanting to show us, hey, you've got some defects, you've got some weaknesses, you've got some character defects that we need to address and we need to correct first. Before you give those three angels messages, we need to make sure that you know where I am. We're on the same page. God says, I want you to be on the same page as I am. Okay? I want you to be prepared and equipped to do the job of giving the last day message, the three angels message. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the, of the creation of God. Listen, pay attention, listen very carefully. I know your works, the works that you do and the works that you don't do. I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. What does it mean to be cold? Cold. Were you cold before you came to, to Christ? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Our hearts were cold. We had no inclination, no love for Christ until Christ showed us our true condition, right? We had no condition. Our sinful condition and our need for Him. What does it mean to be hot? Have this Bernie, yeah. That's have right. this Remember those two that were walking with Jesus on the mass? Did not our hearts burn? Have you seen people that are on fire for the Lord? Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they truly have a love for the Lord. Mm -hmm. They are so in love for the Lord that they're willing to give up everything, do everything, and be everything. Amen? Amen. Amen. Verse 17. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Wow. God shows us the total opposite of what we think we are, right? We have become rich in the things of the world. Our houses, our cars, our pantries are rich with, you know, we have lots of food, we have things that we need, we have shelter. We have our iPads, our iPhones, our computers, our Facebook, Twitter accounts, whatever you need. We have our toys, right? We have the things of the world to occupy us, right? We don't need God because we have become rich in our own eyes. We are wealthy. You know, it is so hard to convert those that are wealthy, those that are rich, those that are satisfied with things of the world. Amen? Amen. They are the hardest to convert. And you have need of nothing. Do we see that today? Where a lot of people will say, I don't need God. I'm good. I don't need the Bible. I'm good. Right? But are they good? No. No, there is none that is good except God. Amen? I live a good life, right? I pay my taxes, I pay my tithes, I come to church, I'm good. But the Lord shows us a, a real picture of ourselves. He says, you are wretched. You are miserable. You are poor in the things of God. You are blind because you do not see your condition. And you are naked because you do not see your sin. But there's hope, people. Amen. There's hope. Amen. Has God left his church? No. No. The church may seem like it will fall. 
there might seem like there's so much wrong in our church that we don't want to go to church anymore. I have friends that are so discouraged from what they see happening in their churches that they don't come to church anymore. They still believe in God. They still believe in the Seventh-day Adventist message. But they have their own fellowship at home. They have their own fellowship with other people. But they never come to church. If they do come to church, it's they're only seeing the wrong things. They're always <clears throat> criticizing, always condemning, always pointing out the wrong. But is that the spirit that Christ wants us to have? No. 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 No matter what we see in the church, this is still God's church. Amen? Amen. 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 And then whatever touches his apple of the eye, it touches him. Mm -hmm. Whatever concerns us, concerns him. So we are to stay in the church no matter how much evil we see going on. Amen? Amen. We're to stay in the church until God tells us when it's time to leave. Because what? The wheat and the tares grow must grow together. Mm -hmm. And if we cannot love those in our church that we know or we see they're doing wrong, how can we be like Christ? How can we minister to them? We cannot. Like I said, this is our time to practice. This time of probation is time for us to practice, to love one another. Christ has loved us. Amen. I counsel you to buy from me. There's hope. God says, I have a remedy. I have a solution. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that we may be rich. Does God want us to be rich? Amen. Yes. Not in the things of the world, but in the things of God. And what is that gold that he's asking? What is that gold that's represented here in, in this Purify scripture? Purify ourselves. The faith. Mm -hmm. I counsel you to buy me, buy from me faith that's refined in the fire. What are the fires represented in our lives? The trials, the purging. Right? The... Um, how should I say, the pruning that God has to do in our lives, right? The sufferings that we have to go through. Every one of us goes through sufferings, and we are called to be partakers of his sufferings. Amen? Amen. Yeah. We're not going to be treated any less than what Christ suffered himself during his lifetime here on earth, when he was a child, and even on the cross he suffered. But thank God, we don't have to go and suffer on the cross and die for the sins of the world. He's already done that for us. Amen? Amen. But what he's calling us is to die to our self. Mm -hmm. Buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich. And white <laughs> garments that you may be clothed. What are those white garments? What is that robe that Christ has asked us to put on? His character, the robe of righteousness. And what color is that robe? White. White. What does white symbolize? Purity. Purity of character. Virginity. Virgin, right? Buy of me white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness, <laughs> The shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. Isn't God gracious? Amen. He doesn't want us to be embarrassed. Amen. He knows that we have, we're naked. But God wants to cover us with himself. So that when we go out, we have nothing to fear. We have nothing to be ashamed about. That we can be confident and courageous know who we are and not be discouraged when people discourage us or reject us, just like people rejected Jesus. Amen? Amen? There are going to be plenty of times when people will reject you, when people will reject me. They'll reject our message. 
they'll reject the, our lifestyle. They'll reject our beliefs. They'll reject our belief that Christ is coming soon. They'll reject the Sabbath. Amen? They might reject your diet. And anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. We're blind, remember? God wants to open our eyes that we can see where we are in the time of history, where we are now. We can see the current events, what's happening in the Big Island, the lava flow. It is so destructive. Many people's homes have been lost. Many lives have been drastically changed. And there's going to be more and more of that happening. Amen? Yes. I was. I kind of follow up on what's going on in the Big Island because my heart goes out to those people. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you have to leave everything yeah. and you can't take anything with you, it makes you realize what is most important. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. I'm going to close with what is our work as a church people, as Seventh-day Adventists, as the remnant church that has come out of the Protestant denominations. This is from the book De Sozo, Reversing the Worst Evil by Dave Fiedler. How many of you have heard of this book or read this book? Okay, how many of you have read it? Okay. Very good. I'm in the process of finishing the book. So how do we finish the last, how do we finish this work? How do we go about proclaiming the three angels' messages? How do we do that? He writes, I know of nothing that seems to be hated more by Lucifer, Satan, and all his hopes than our efforts to encourage the education and training of men and women to do a work similar to that of the master. Our friends say, that's all good, but conditions have changed. You know, the spirit of prophecy, that doesn't, re that doesn't uh, apply to us anymore. That, that was old days. That was the old time. We don't listen to that. But it says here, you cannot now work the way the master did. Conditions have changed. Present conditions make it necessary to do something entirely different. Yes, it is true that conditions have changed. We see it. And will change at the end of time. And in minor plans and details, our work must change. We have to change our thinking. We have to change our methods. We have to change the way we reach out to people. And we have to adapt it to the present conditions. And it's very simple. It's not very hard. The next sentence. We must meet the people where they're at, where they are. But we must also remember that God himself has not changed. That the power of the Holy Spirit has not been withdrawn from the world. And that God will open the way for us to follow the instruction of the Master. What is our most important study? Our most important study is to learn how to get access to the homes and to the hearts of the people. Amen. Remember how I shared in the beginning how mm -hmm. as a church people, and Auntie Liz emphasizes, we don't go out anymore. We don't visit. We don't have our pastors come and visit us anymore, right? Unless we're at the hospital and we're on our deathbed. I call it nurturing. Really sick. What was that, Auntie Liz? I call it nurturing each nurturing. other. Nurturing. Auntie Liz calls it nurturing. We have to get back to the basics. We have to get back to the basics because that's what Christ did. Christ mingled with men as one who sought their good. He showed them his sympathy when he went to visit them. <clears throat> hey, how are you doing? I heard you were sick or I heard you lost uh, your husband or, or wife. I'm so sorry. Is there anything that I can do for you? Christ ministered to the needs of their people. He didn't just meet their needs. He ministered to them. And what does that mean? 
we follow. He not only helped them, right? He not only encouraged them in their work, but he opened up a way for them to see that God cares for his, their eternal lives as well. Our most important study is to learn how to get access to the homes and to the hearts of the people. We need to draw close to each other. We need to go into each other's homes and be willing to rejoice with those who rejoice and to mourn with those who mourn. Amen? Amen. We need to learn how to do that. We, yeah, we We've do. We've forgotten how yeah, to do that. We have. We have. Right where we are, in our own homes, in our own families, in our workplaces, in our own church, right where we are, God chooses us, redeems us, blesses us, and changes us into new creatures in Him. He gives us a new, a new name, sons and daughters of God. But He doesn't leave us there. He equips us. We who have been so unspeakably blessed as a people to become a blessing to others, amazing and comprehensible grace. <coughs> You might not see everything, but I just wanted to show you how the story of Mary, when the angel came to her and announced that God was to choose her to be the mother of Jesus, you can see how our life as a church parallels that life of Mary during that time. The message, or the messenger, is the three angels. What are the three angels? What are the three angels? It's our churches, it's our schools, it's our publishing houses, it's our hospitals, it's our clinics, whatever institution that we have that claims to be the three angels, except the Adventists. Who is the receiver? Just as angel Gabriel went to Mary, who was a virgin. Which woman in the Bible is God giving this message to? It's the virgin church. It's God's remnant church who comes out of the organized church. There's going to be people that are not going to make it in our church. And God says that right in the Bible. And in the spirit of prophecy, he says that many will be lost. Many in our Adventist churches will be lost. Isn't that unfortunate? Yes, yes, very, very. Many will be lost. But the message, in order to proclaim the three angels' message, God has given us gifts. God has blessed us with the testimonies, the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy. Spirit of prophecy. How many of you read the spirit of prophecy? Very few. I read it. I read it, yes. I encourage you. In fact, I plead with you that you read the Spirit of Prophecy because it is a gift to us to be equipped and to be prepared to give the last warning. And many will not be able to give the last warning. Many will not have the character of Christ formed within them because many are not doing the simple things, the basic things. Okay. And here, the first response, when the angel told Mary, but she was troubled. A lot of us in our churches, we are troubled. We don't know our identity. I have a friend that says, Tracy, she's a Seventh-day Adventist. She grew up in the Adventist church, went to all Adventist schools, and now she's in her 40s, and she goes, Tracy, I don't know what I am anymore. I don't know what I believe anymore as a Seventh-day Adventist. How sad. How sad. But then God affirms us, just like Gabriel affirmed Mary. He said, fear not. So God tells us, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid if you've lost your identity. Amen? Don't be afraid if you don't, remember, you don't know what you believe. There's still hope. And then God shows us our true, God shows Mary her true identity. Or Mary shows and shares with God. How can this be? You know, I'm a virgin. I can't conceive of a child. But in our day, 
God reveals to us our true identity. Because we don't see it. That's the reverse. Amen? Do you see what's happening? And then God prepares his people. God filled Mary with the Holy Ghost so that she could take on her role as the mother of God's child. In the same way, the latter rain will be poured out upon God's people who are preparing for his coming, the refreshing from the presence of the Lord, and the loud cry of the third angel. The third angel is where we warn people the Sunday law is coming. And if you worship the mark of the beast, you will be lost. And that is the warning that we're to give. But we must be filled with the Holy Spirit to even have the courage, courage and the boldness to say that to someone. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then the God has a forerunner. Who was that man that God raised before Christ came to prepare the way for Christ? John the Baptist, mm -hmm. Luke 157. He prepared the way for Christ to come. Did you know that we also have a forerunner? Before the three angels' message is proclaimed, what work do we have to do? What work has God given us? What message has God given us? The health message. That's right. We have a health message for a reason brothers and sisters, that health message. Sometimes you hear it as medical missionary work, gospel medical missionary work, um, the benevolent work, right? Not very many people know about this, right? How many of you have been to one of our um, lifestyle centers? Okay. Yes, I know Jolene went to Weimar. Moniz, where have you been to? Weimar. Who else has been to one of our institutions? Eden Valley. Eden Valley. Do some of you recognize these names? No? Some of you? Yes, Alan does. Okay. So there are institutions that are, that are run, managed, established by Seventh-day Adventists. And there's lifestyle centers. They're like small sanitariums, small homes, where people can go and get medical care. They can have their sicknesses and diseases reversed. Diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, even cancer. And what they do at these lifestyle centers is they will use not drugs, not surgery, not injections, but they will use natural remedies. What are natural remedies? What are natural remedies? Herbs, nutrition, exercise, water, sunshine, temperance, yes, rest, air, sunshine, and trust in God. Are these foreign to you? Have you guys heard of these before? Yeah, we have a health message. Read it. It's in the council and councils on food and diet, councils on diet on foods, and also ministry of healing. Um, what else? Medical ministry. Anyway, at these lifestyle centers, people not only learn to reverse their sickness and disease through lifestyle changes, but they learn that there's a God who cares for their soul. And when they experience these changes, when their diseases are reversed, when their diabetes is reversed, their high blood pressure is reversed, their cancer is reversed, they see a practical demonstration of what the gospel is. It becomes real to them. God becomes real to them. God's love becomes real to them. And they begin to feel a gratefulness that they never had before. They begin to feel blessed. And they begin to ask, what do you guys believe? As a church people, why do you guys go to church on Saturday? So why do you guys eat the way you eat? Why did you serve the food we serve? You know? Why do you guys exercise? Why do you get up in the morning and read your Bible? The medical missionary work has twofold purpose. 
Number one, if we embrace the health message, if we accept the truth of using these natural remedies for us, it produces in us a character of Christ. Twofold, the second reason. The second reason why God gives us the medical ministry or the medical work, the gospel medical missionary work, is so that we can disarm the prejudices that God, the people have against us. As a church, do we have a lot of prejudices? Do some people call us a cult? Yes. Yeah. So do some people hate us? Yeah, they do. But when we present the health message, people see that we love them, that God loves them, and cares for them. God cares for their health. We care for their health. They see a demonstration that God cares for their soul when we minister to their salvation. So the health message is not to make sinners healthy. The health message is for us, as well as for the people, that they might know and that they might see that there's a people in these last days that are called Seventh-day Adventists. And you know, they eat differently. They dress differently. They live differently. And they love differently. They don't just love in words, but they love in deeds. They come to my house. They come to my house wherever I'm at, wherever I'm at, whether if I have a house or whether I live in the streets, they come to me and they feed me. They clothe me. They minister to me. They pray with me. They visit me. And they minister to me. Not only physically, but they minister to my soul. They have something better to offer me than the world does. Than even what the Sunday churches offer. They have something that is valuable that I want. And I'm willing to give everything to have what they want. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lastly, God's promise is fulfilled. For Mary, when she gave birth to Christ, and when Christ did his sacrificial work at Calvary, the promise of the Messiah was fulfilled. So in our days, <clears throat> Revelation 3, 21, God promises to us, to him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my Father's throne. God's people are sealed. Probation is closed. Christ comes a second time to redeem his people. Amen. Amen. I wish I had more time to share with you about what the gospel medical missionary work looks like. But it's more than what we think. It's not just for health professionals. You don't have to be a doctor or a nurse a therapist to become a medical missionary. You don't have to. You can just give water to someone that's in need. You can write a letter or a card or call someone that needs to hear from you. Amen? That is medical missionary work, my friends. Very simple. You can give clothes to someone. You can give them a simple meal. You can buy them a meal. You can invite them to your house. You can go to their house and eat with them. That is medical missionary work. And that will bring in and usher in Christ's second coming. I have one last thing to share. Did you know that God's church is a working church? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not a sleeping church. <laughs> it's not a sleeping church. Let me see if I can find it. <clears throat> Failure is not an option for us. God's not going to fail. We're the ones that fail Him. Amen? Amen? When our churches will fulfill the duty resting upon them, they will be living, working agencies for the Master. The manifestation of Christian love will fill the soul with a deeper, more earnest fervor to work for Him who gave His life to save the world. We shall see the medical missionary work broadening and deepening at every point of its progress because of the inflowing of hundreds and thousands of streams until the whole earth is covered as the waters covers the sea. 
So this is a promise to us that God will fulfill his word, his promise to us. That he will make us to become like him. He will transform us in our characters to become like him. And that he will finish the work through us. We just need to say, yes, Lord, here I am. I am willing. Amen? Amen. If you are willing to answer the call, I don't know what it is, but I know God is calling each one of you to give up those things that weigh us down, to give up those cherished sins, to give up those things in our lives that just are not going to prepare us. I know God has called me. God is talking to me, and God is convicting me that there's things in my life that I need to get rid of, that I need to let go, and that I need to rely on Him to provide for everything that I need. If that's you today, I ask you to stand up as we have a closing prayer. I'll just raise my hand. <coughs> Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the message that you have given us. We thank you for the prophetic word that shows us where we are in the timeline of history. We thank you for the gift of the spirit of prophecy. We thank you for your holy word, the Bible. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that will empower us and equip us to do the work that you have called us. Only, Lord, let us be faithful and let us be willing, as Mary was, so that we can truly see uh, your promise fulfilled, your coming soon. And that, Lord, we will rejoice, Lord, and that we can go home with you in the clouds of heaven. Help us, Lord, to endure the sufferings and the trials that we will go through. Give us courage. Give us faith to believe and trust that you will bring us through in these last days. Help us to not be afraid. For I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.